Hello, Eric. Good morning. Well, I don't know. Looks like Sanjaya. Sanjaya's getting more popular. See, here's the thing, though. I think that he could be out this week. Because no. look at how... No. Gwen no. Stefani and No Doubt are really popular. He murdered one of their songs. I thought so, he nobody, did a good job. Nobody did a good job, Eric. Yeah, Compared to the would, others. You would think that the fans of Gwen and No Doubt are going to say, Oh, no way. Vote him out. Eric. Wishful thinking. Yeah, then they're, they're not going to vote for anybody because everybody murdered the No Doubt song. Eric. There was only three of them counting him. Eric, Sanjaya is going to be your next American Idol. I, I hope not. Get oh. ready to say it. He's already going out on the tour. Yeah, that's shitty. He's going to be a bigger star than the winner. If, the, if he doesn't win, he'll still be a bigger star. You know what, Beth and I decided if we get another bulldog, we're naming it Sanjaya. <laughs> Honestly. We're not shitting you. You see? <laughs> that poor dog. Well, just know one thing, Eric. You're not part of our movement. You decided to be the outsider. You could have been part of the fun. Yeah, and as you heard yesterday, I don't need to be a part of your movement in order to get to go to the show. Well, Go! Do whatever you want. They're going to let you go once, and nobody's going to talk to you every show and put you on the air and get your views of what the contestants just did. We were going to make you one of the judges. Simon would have known your name had you joined our movement. Besides this, that guy, Jason, I have two other kids into the show. They won't get you on the air. Johnny and someone else that I'm Good not luck. name. Good luck. Johnny. Hey, Wolf. Hey, Eric, I voted well over 100 times. You're screwed. Sanjay is my next American Idol. Gee, nice, you you have, nice that you have time to waste. <laughs> <laughs> You're the kid that watches it every single week. I'm just voting to ruin your fun. Right. Yeah, but I didn't start voting till last week. Well, whatever, it's screwing your head up. Yeah, now. you didn't want Sanjay in the tour, and he's in the tour. We love it. Howard, what's the strategy for next week? You, you know, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. We, we really well, I think that people now know they need to vote for Sanjaya. But I think you ought to leave some recorded messages okay. and, you know, continue to remind people to yeah, vote for who, Sanjaya. Who the hell really listens to Master Tape? I mean, come on. A lot of people. <laughs> if it's two people, they'll be voting for Sanjaya. Uh, a lot of people said to me on Friday last week they were just laughing about us. Uh, Eric, if you want to... You can tell the people not to vote for Sanjaya now. I'll give you 30 seconds to make your appeal. Go ahead. Please stop voting for Sanjaya. The kid does not have any talent whatsoever. That's he, it? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. It's pitiful. And it, it's becoming a mockery to the show. <laughs> I mean, SNL even did it a bit on last Saturday's show. That's how big he is. Well, go ahead if you have any more to say. Now's your chance. I I don't really have anything else. I don't know if you convinced anybody with that argument. That's right. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to edit out the little part where he goes, you know, not to vote. It's going to sound like vote for Sanjay. Ah. <clears throat> See? <laughs> now you're promoting Sanjay. I'm going to have you promote Sanjay. Richard's going to start working on that. Uh, he's going to edit out the word stop, and it's just going to go, instead of saying, stop voting for Sanjay, it'll be voting for Sanjay. See? Howard, is there any shot you can call in to, uh, to Bubba or Pharrell next week, maybe on Tuesday? Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, just, just keep it going, because if you don't keep up with it, people are going to forget. I, I know that uh, in Philadelphia you have strong support, but we definitely want to get this kid through. All right, Wolfie. Uh, Eric, could you give us one don't vote for Sanjaya? Can you say don't? No, no, say. Yeah, yeah don't vote. Don't vote for Sanjaya. I'm not saying that again, because like you said, you, you would edit the don't out. <laughs> You can't trick me. It's going to be vote for Sanjaya. <laughs> this is completely off topic, Eric. I just love when you say this. Could you say I'm wearing my favorite PJ pants? <laughs> yeah, what PJ pants are you wearing? I know you wear them to work. <laughs> actually, actually, I do sometimes. I never called them PJ pants. Phil, you're on the air. That's hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
Hey, I voted for uh, like an hour last night. I got through 20 times, but it wasn't consistent. I kept getting busy signals. I'd get through, then I'd have like five minutes of busy signals. Me too. Oh, through, good. But I, I got through uh, 20 times. There you go, Eric. We're coming, Eric. We're going to do this. I got through to the Keisha a lot more than that, so. Yeah, that shows you no one's voting Nobody's for Nobody's voting for her. You know, the girls who can kind of, the people who can kind of sing on that show all have a problem. You know, it's like, Lakeisha's got a good voice, but she's so fat. She looks like she's fucking 80 years old. Nobody she's can, just they're not all, attractive. She's just unattractive. They're then, all cruiserweights. The ones who can sing? I know. And then there's like the kind of light-skinned, blackish chick. She's got the white mom and the black dad. You know which one I'm talking about? Is she with the, Was she the one toward the end who yeah. did the... Uh... Her. White yeah. mom, black dad. She, yeah, she has. She's got shoulders like a linebacker. Yeah. Like you just. She's well, hardly a girl. It's almost like she's like one of those chicks out of Zap Comics. You know, like with the big ass and the big titties. <laughs> See, she made Ryan Seacrest look like yeah. Eric. Right. And then there's the the hey, humble Eric. black chick, the one who. The one who's the backup singer. I mean, she the one is looks like Shrek. Yeah, she is odd. I mean, she's just peculiar and creepy and just like out of another planet. Let's be honest. I mean, if Simon was going to be real honest, they should make Leah judge. I just say, you know what? You can sing, honey, but you're you creepy. You should be behind a curtain. Yeah, the reason you're a background singer is nobody wants to see you hopping around on the stage. You look like a friggin' monster. And then they put her in that paisley print. Oh, oh, oh for Who's Christ's sake. Was that? Oh, I love that shirt, Robin. <laughs> what a, you know why Sanj this, you're doing Sanjaya a favor? Because I don't watch the show ever, and I know the fu I, He's the only one I know. He's I know. the only one who looks like an right. idol. Uh, you know, and I'm very sure there's, important to there's the a show. bunch of construction workers that know who he is now, too. I mean, see, he's famous. See, Eric? Sanjay is going to win. Howard. Hey, wait, Sanjay is on the phone. Hold on. This is an exclusive, Eric. I'll let you talk to him. Yeah, right. Sanjay? Eric, Rick Sanjay. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, you stupid ass nigga? Oh, give me a break, high pitch. Go away. It's Sanjay. There's no hard thing. It's Sanjaya for real. I'm going to win. You're going to deal with me on uh, on American Idol. You're a stupid ass midget. Who's high pitch? I this is Sanjaya. I pitch. Here's a clue to you. You sound, every time you try to do an impression, you sound exactly like high pitch. It's not high pitch. Derek just Sanjaya. getting the joke. I'm going to win American Idol. Vote for Sanjaya. No, it's Sanjaya, Eric. I'm not, I wouldn't fool you. It does sound like high pitch, Eric. I'll agree. But, but that's how Sanjaya sounds on the phone. Right. And Eric, thank you for explaining that joke we've been doing for six years. <laughs> Sanjaya, thank you. You're very welcome, Alan. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, you just—it's his accent. Howard. Yes. And, and I was trying to say when you were talking about the one that's got the big shoulders. It's interesting you mentioned linebacker. Her father. And, Artie, I don't know why you don't vote for her. Her father was an ex-giant fo football player. You're a big Giants fan. Well, I'm no, not... that's not the one they're talking about, though. You're talking about the white chick who's a rocker. She's the one that looks like a linebacker. No, He's talking no. about the tall... No, I'm talking about the one that looks like a linebacker is the tall... The... Uh... Was her father a linebacker? Yeah. Yeah, no, not a linebacker or a cornerback. A cornerback? Yeah. Well, she should be thin. Cornerbacks are thin. No, corner. Corner backs are thin. They oh. gotta be fast. Uh, Brian, you're on the air in Boston. Oh, Howard, it was fucking great last night. I had my regular house phone in one ear, my cell phone in the other. I must have got through about 200 times. Ah. Me too. I was, uh, I was, I was voting, and Beth came in the room. <laughs> oh, you kidding? I got my girlfriend staring, staring, sitting across from me, looking at me like a fucking crazy. Me too. Beth goes, "What are you doing?" I go, "I'm voting." I couldn't right. believe it because I have never, you know, like well, that's one of my vows that I would never get involved in voting for one of these. So she contestants goes, on a show, and there I am dialing oh, frantically. I know, and she goes, I can't believe you're doing this. She goes, I'm leaving the room. So I said, go ahead. Yeah. Leave the room. I mean, I, I have I, to I, do what I have to do. It's my responsibility to vote. Hey, Howard, I'm there. I'll be there next week for you, too, even though you guys aren't going to be around. I'll, All I'll right. Vote again. Yeah, me too. Don't worry. I'll be well, voting, we'll too. we'll be voting even though we're not here. That's right. Question for Artie. Is there one thing you've always wanted to do with a woman but could never make it happen? <laughs> this would right. be your chance. Uh, What's that fantasy? One thing I've always wanted to do? Not crush her. Uh, you know, you're, emotionally, I can be hard on a girl. You're right, Alex. Can I tell you something, though? Um, I don't think it's about doing... What, Eric? Weight-wise, too. 
Four, you know what, wait, why two? You're very uninteresting uh-huh. when you're not talking about American Idol. Hey, Put your PJ pants on and go to bed. Hey, Eric, wait. Jeff the Drunk has something to tell you. Go ahead and tell him, Jeff. Um, I voted 161 times. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, how many six-packs did you finish in that time? None. I don't believe that. Eric, uh, he's on his way to becoming a carpenter. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Jeez. A All right. I'm anyway. doing some drywall. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. You know what? Hey, call back, call back, uh, Jeff. I want to ask you about that carpenter business. I, I hung up on him, but I would do want to talk to him. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, Artie, Akira, right? If you have sex with her, well, I got to tell you, this weekend's going to be very difficult. I mean, I'm not that smooth. I don't know how to make that happen. I'll tell you how it happens. She's going to come up to your room, and you're going to say, "I want you." No, Artie said no, he's, he's got the other girl. The other girl the no, no, no. If I, yeah, well, the what? The you juggle. You're oh, juggling that, women. You oh, what do you mean? That, you mean you're already lined up with that girl to come to Atlantic well, City? Yeah, I mean, you know, she like, she lives in the area, and, uh, you know, it's like the, the the two other times I played Atlantic City, she, she came to my gig, and, you know, it was... Uh, well, the care is not a sure thing in the sense that you don't even know if she'll show up. Well... Well, that's the only problem. Maybe she'll, you know, fuck one of the buccaneers. But if you, down this, Bay. But if you really have this casual sex thing going with this other girl, just say, hey, Kira's coming to fuck me, and uh, I'll fuck you in the next Maybe time. Maybe you get a two-girl. Uh, I was going to say, how about a three-way? It's not that kind of conversation. You think this girl's up for a three-way? No. No? Have you ever discussed it? I don't think she's up for a three-way. She really? sounds like she's trying hard. Right. Yeah, but yeah, not now. She might be uh, experimental. Okay, you getting Look, feelings for this girl? Well, I think a little bit. Yeah. No, a little bit. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. No, uh, yes. Uh, 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 no, but it's just, I mean, how, dude, come on. You could pull this off. You're kind of dating a chick, and then this Asian fucking stripper flies up, and you're like, oh, by the way, hers, she's involved, no, too. I mean, I know. don't know what I would do. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, I you think know it, what? You're talking to the wrong people. The experts are down in Tampa. Right. Well, here's the thing. No That's shit. True too. Uh, but I think if put it this way, if I said, "Listen, I she's clearly going to find out about why I cancel our," you know, I, I do you think, have to cancel the whole thing? Uh, well, I think that'd be the last time I'd see this girl. <laughs> put it that way. Really? So it's just a matter of do I want that? To happen. Really? But I mean, she knows you're going to be out screwing other chicks. Yeah, and stuff. You don't have to rub her face. Right. She's, right. Got, she's got a weekend. <laughs> it's a little blatant. Yeah. <laughs> a little, I, I mean, go fuck so what are you going to do? I man? think if I was getting laid in St. Louis, out of sight, out of mind. What are you going to tell Akira then? Are you going to just say, don't come? Uh. Can't she come another time? Yeah, I mean, why is it when it rains it pours? I mean, there's many yeah. weekends where you're not getting right. laid. What about the weekend after? <laughs> no Atlantic? kidding. But seriously, why doesn't she just fly up the weekend after Atlantic City and just take her out? Uh. All right, you well, okay? I'll see what their schedule's you like. If she wants to come, call, to the, if she wants to come to the next gig, I guess that could happen. No, call Bubba and say, Bubba, I want her, but I got this problem. Why can't they fly up next weekend or fly up the next fucking day? Mm-hmm. See, that's how I'd handle things. I'd say, Bubba, listen, man, I really do want to try and score with Akira, but you got to fly her up. Don't tell her to come the one day I'm getting late. It's going to make it yeah, too Artie, awkward. Artie, the one nah. person's feelings you don't have to worry about hurting or accusing. Hey, Artie, I'm going to do you a favor right now. Gary, you call Bubba today. Okay. Explain what's going on. Right. Tell him Artie wants to bang Akira. Uh, explain to I used to do this with Gary all the time. Gary, you tell Bubba mm-hmm. that <laughs> Artie's getting laid that day, right. that particular day. He's, He's got, got everything got lined day. up. He's got a girl. It would be awkward to call the girl and go, I can't see you. Right. Any other day. Got it. He's free. No, but he has a calendar. One day is filled out of the whole year. It'll take care of it. He doesn't want to well, no, give up a, for sure. It's pussy a weekend. For maybe pussy. It's Forget a weekend. weekend. You'll it's fuck like her during the week. Thir- too. It's like from Thursday to like say Monday. Oh, you have the Forget whole right. thing. So you're saying next weekend you're available? No, no next weekend he's not available. He is. This oh, this weekend, weekend right? Yeah. Gary, look at me. Don't talk to Artie. Talk to me. In fact, Artie, you're Artie's available. Embarrassed. Are you available all of next week except for after Sunday night? Uh, if she wants to come to L.A. Oh, so you'll be in L.A.? That might be an interesting thing. He's got a jet. Why, why can't long, he go to L.A.? What days are you in L.A.? Does Emma have a big enough jet to go to L.A.? <laughs> uh, sure he does. Probably <laughs> from, like, probably Monday afternoon I'll probably leave. And we, okay. In other words, Gary, listen to me. I know. I know. I'm going to make it simple for you because I don't want you to screw this up because Gary gets complicated when All he right. talks. Artie is unavailable to fuck. Next weekend. No. 
this weekend. Well, that's this coming. No, 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 no. This weekend. Got it, right. Why do you say next weekend? Because it's coming up. No, 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 Gary. Okay, I got it. Get, no, 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 this fucking... is where you're going to fuck up. I don't fuck up. I know what we're... I Mark, know you don't know. I can tell you you don't you know, know the difference between... Audie's not available from this Friday to this Sunday right. night. Is that this... next weekend? I'm talking. He's available from Monday in L.A. No, no, to no what's that's that? not what I want you to say. Gary, that's not what I want you to then say. Then you make the fucking call. No, you're making the call. It would be embarrassing for me to make I'm that call. I'm having fun listening to this. <laughs> Listen to me. This is all this about you. This is what you. used to happen. When, this is why but you and I have... But you're not even letting Artie give his schedule. Gary, you're not listening to Do you me. know where Artie is the weekend after no, this one? No, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Yeah, I'm going to finish my sentence. Even if they ask me where he is. I told you what I want you to say, and you're not listening. They'll fly to Guam. Here's what I want you to Artie, do. Artie, you want to have dinner in L.A. on Monday if Kira's not around? All right, there you go. All right. What, it, what day of the week is tomorrow? Tomorrow is Thursday. Okay. Is that next Thursday? No, this weekend. All right. Now, if I was to say to you, Gary, I need you to do something for me tomorrow, would you say, no, I'm available a week from tomorrow? No, it's tomorrow. Right. So Thursday is tomorrow. That's right. It's not next Thursday. What? Right? Huh? Okay. So, when I say Artie this weekend is with a girl. That's correct. It's not next weekend. I got it. Okay. You sure? Positive. All right. This weekend. S Sunday, this coming no. Sunday, is this weekend or next weekend? This coming Sunday is the end of this weekend. All right, but would you call it this weekend or next weekend? This weekend. Ah, uh, better. Better. Now I see you understand. All right, now we're going to move on. What I want you to say to Bubba is... <laughs> Artie is free every other day of the year <laughs> for the next 55 years so next to fuck Akira, except for this coming weekend. We looked at his calendar, and after extensively searching, we can't find a day he has anything to do. Okay, may I interject right. now? Wouldn't it be helpful if they said, okay... Akira's That's the next step. Come back to me, and I'll tell you what to say to that. But, why do, but if, if they say Akira's available, where will Artie be? Because I'm afraid know, you'll get confused and get, and get into that next why weekend. Why don't we get Akira's availability? Why don't I just get Bubba on, you know, you know, on the phone? No, you just handle it. Okay. All right. All right. But anyway, you have that clip, by the way. Do you remember what we were talking about? Elizabeth, with... Elizabeth Hasselbeck and, uh, and Joy Behar talking about... Oh, good. This Beth. is after the show. Yeah. <clears throat> Elizabeth Hasselbeck, it, just, it, it kills her to talk about you. It, it really does. Yeah. What is this on? What page? It's Gary page one. It's all the way in the right-hand corner. All she, right. She respects your empire. <sighs> your empire? Your... <laughs> My empire. Meanwhile, evil empire. Beth said it was so weird because Lisa was in the audience of the view, Lisa G from uh -huh. the news department. And as soon as she gets done, she so Lisa goes, Beth, do you think your audition went well and will they offer you the uh... job? So Beth goes, I'm not auditioning. I'm not looking for a job. I, I don't even expect that they're going to offer me a job. I, I wasn't doing it for that reason. So she, she got all, you know, she was like, oh. <laughs> that news department. I love it. Um, she was a good sport. She was cleaning with me in segment five. I know. You're best friends now. Yeah, we are. We cleaned a toilet. I mean, that's bonding right there. <laughs> Were you a little concerned or, you know, before you met Beth? No, because I tend to separate couples. I don't define one by who they're with. I think that she's obviously a champion for being with him and having to defend him all the time. There are a lot of people that love ever. him and a lot of people that don't. She doesn't have to defend me ever. Elizabeth doesn't know anything about my life, quite frankly. So I think she's a great spirit. She's amazing. Would you uh, ever be a guest if he invited you on the show? No, I think he asked me a while back, and I said no. But I'm I'm a fan of the empire that he's created. I think he's incredible at what he's done. I don't listen to the show just because I have sensitive ears. <laughs> I got to tell you, when I was one, I thought Elizabeth uh, was looking real cute yesterday. You know. Uh, despite the politics and all that. But I got to admit, I was like, man, I'd like to see Beth and Elizabeth getting it on. Oh. <laughs> like making out in my bed. In my bed. I bet Rosie O'Donnell was thinking the same thing. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what her story is, but I got to tell you. Bro, you, what do you mean? Rosie to wouldn't Beth. be attracted to Beth? Of course you would be. I wonder. I don't know. Well, if she, I mean, come on. Who she's, knows what Rosie? Was she blind? She's clearly the dude. <laughs> maybe she wanted it. Maybe she wanted her. I, don't, I, I, she, I wish Beth would have said, "Rosie, do you? Am I your type?" That would have been so interesting. Well, Rosie, next time, wife is a cute chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? she is. Yeah, yeah that's isn't true. Isn't she a hot broad? Though? I heard back in the day, Rosie uh, O'Donnell got the best looking girls ever. Like I heard when she was a club comic on Long Island, she fucked like more than any guy club comic. Yeah.
like you know, broads. Really? Yeah, I heard yeah. that she was quite the player. Like literally would have like a whole bunch of girls up in a hotel room and stuff. That the party scene was supposed to be incredible with her. I yeah. remember hearing about that. She'd leave a hotel and the whole place would be a buzz. Really? Beth really liked her. She said they had a really nice uh, conversation backstage uh -huh. and she thought she was really cool and uh, she she liked it. All. She loved the whole experience. She thought it was kind of neat, you know? She kind of had a good time. Let me just hear the rest of this interview. I can take it. Come on. I can take it. You know, I She's would trust. It. Here's the thing. I would trust Howard. I don't know that I would trust maybe one of the other guests on the show. So I would trust. I would what to go on the show. What's your biggest fear? What do you think will happen? I'm not afraid. I just make wise choices. Howard, I'm. I think he is. Like Joy said, incredibly intelligent, yes. and I think it would be nice to sit down and talk with him. I just think if it could be the callers that call in, that's who I wouldn't really want to maybe talk mm -hmm. to. Well, you can't really trust him. You don't know what he's going to come up with. Him trust you him. know that. I think no, he, he's. But you he, know that he's going to give you something unexpected, so at least you kind of know that going into it. Well, you just don't. Yeah, you know it's unexpected, but you don't know what it is. You would go on. You would go in there on guard. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wouldn't like be. You wouldn't be going into another interview with someone that you thought was completely benign, and then they throw you a curveball. You yeah. expect the curveball. <laughs> I think you, I don't think you go in there on guard. I think you go in there, you know, with whatever, like an attitude of, well, let him do whatever he wants to do. Uh, not and me. I go in with the guard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally with the guard. With the guard. <laughs> I don't know. She had a good time. It was nice. She was walking down the street. A lot of people were like, "Wow, man, we saw you on the View. You were great." And it's a it's a hit show, right? I mean, it's like a, it's been uh, more successful since Rosie yeah. sat in the chair. Yeah. See, I had never watched the View until yesterday. Bethel was great, but that is the most unwatchable show I've ever seen. How could anyone stand listening to these women yell over each other? Also, I had never seen Elizabeth Hasselback until yesterday, and although she's a crazy cunt, she's smoking hot. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Uh, here's a, here was a negative, though. As pretty as Bethel looked on The View, she was equally as dull. The only thing she could intelligibly talk about was you, and I don't think the audience wants to hear that. You know you aren't doing well when one of the co-hosts has to tell you to talk. Did she realize this was a talk show and not a photo shoot? It's obvious you're not marrying her for her personality or intelligence. I was the only one who said that. No, I mean, she thought well, that, that she... was nasty. Yeah, well, like, not everyone's going to love you, but she thought that... You know, I, I thought she had the right tone. She talked not only about me. She talked about the war in Iraq. She talked about uh, American Idols. Talked about whatever they brought up, Dancing with the Stars or whatever. But uh, she, there was a point she said where they were really getting getting it on, so to speak, mixing it up. I know on this show, the guests, we, we have certain people sit in, and they've got to be able to back off sometimes. Look, when I first started sitting in this chair, I had the same thing. People would listen and fucking scrutinize the whole thing and uh, go, well, how come you didn't talk that much during this? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it ain't my show. What the fuck am I supposed to do? It, it's nope. very difficult. I think it's harder to find out when you're sitting in a show like that or like this when not to talk than when to talk. I think that's a, a yeah. better skill to have. I thought she hit the right tone. I told her that. I well, said, you hit a home run. it's very hard to walk into a room where three people work together all the time right. and figure out where you come in. That's right. I, I'm a, I was a very big fan of her appearance. I thought that her quieting down during one discussion was smart. And then talking through everything else was smart. I thought she handled it well. I gave her an A+. Plus. And I really did. And she said, well, you're saying that because, you know, you love me. And I said, <laughs> well, I do. But the fact of the matter is you did a really good job. You really did. And I think that you came off well. And I think, you know, it's a tough trick, too, you know, to have women like you, especially when you look like that. And then, yeah, to have all that mm -hmm. scrutiny. I mean, you could crumble under the pressure. Yeah, you couldn't name one other person who co-hosted on The View, and yet, yet Beth's in the paper getting reviewed and stuff. Yeah, it was mentioned on, in every newspaper, and then, of course, everybody's watching. Barbara Walters sent me a note saying how she was watching the show, and she thought Beth was adorable and great and oh, interesting wonderful. and uh, really enjoyed uh, watching her. Marianne from Brooklyn, you're on the air. I didn't like it, Howard. Not because what? of Beth, but that's a very unnatural environment. <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell said the fans were scary, and since when is Rosie O'Donnell scared of anybody? I think it was a farce. I think she... she well, you're absolutely wrong, Marianne. In fact, I'll tell you a story. Yeah. Uh, for Don't years, cut me off today, Howard. I'm not cutting you off, but I'm I'm just I'm just going to tell you that Rosie O'Donnell was telling the truth. For years, she was so frightened of the fans, she called me at my home. Right. And now this is and this the, is before any yeah detente. Right. She called me and said, "You've got to stop. I'm scared. I'm scared for my family. Where I go out for a walk and people are calling me, you know, pumpkinhead. They want me to die. Well, that's she, not all the fans. So no, 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 no. That. But she was afraid. So she said. Yeah, I don't think it was all the fans at all. I think it was probably a couple of people. So she said to me, "What do you know? What do we do here?" And I said, uh, "Well, you can stop telling people not to come on my show, 
And I said, that's what got me ticked off. I said, you fuck with my show, you fuck with me. She goes, I didn't do that. I go, well, I, I heard it differently, but whatever. I said, uh, I'll tell you what, you, you, you calm down about me, you know, you, 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 and I'll calm down about you. We'll, we'll see where it goes. And then I really didn't calm down, I'd say. I still talked about her, but then when I saw her HBO special and what the shit she was going through being a lesbian, I was kind of like, you know what, there's more to this woman than... Well, I could understand that, but yeah. for some reason, how would she fight with everyone? So coming out with that, like, oh, I was scared with, of the fans and stuff. I didn't buy it. What, if I... everywhere you went, people were goofing on you? And uh, uh, Come on, you, yeah, listen, it's same thing. we did the same day. thing to Chevy Chase. Wait a second, Chevy Everybody Chase freaked call. out. David Lee Roth came to his knees at one point. John Bon Jovi had a feud with him going, and, and yeah, like the fans. Just, Our fans are incredibly loyal to me and this show. That's right. And, uh, but I don't think we're scary. Well, no. I mean, if well, they're attacking you, I it's know scary. I, have it. I also felt she had to explain, Beth had to explain how great you are. And why does she even have the need to have to explain who you are and how? You know what I'm saying? That part was like a turn off. We know you're a great person, so uh, well, why do we talking, have to tell the people? different audience. Right. She was talking to their audience. I didn't like I like it. I'm sorry. I love Beth, but I felt like she was very unnatural in that environment. And it's All a right. terrible, terrible show. And I want to say how what I wrote to David Hinckley. So I'm sending you the letter. He responded. Fred, I saw you in Brooklyn. You were awesome. Thank you. And I want to say I love you guys, but I hate the view. All right. There you go. Marianne from Brooklyn does not like the view. Go ahead. I was just going to say that uh, the Chevy Chase thing, I just got a call yesterday. Um, Chevy Chase has an authorized biography that's coming out in May. Good. And I understand that they're, they told me. That a substantial, you know, chapter is devoted to the, his feud with you how, wow. and how it was rectified and what went on. So that shows you how heavy it can get. Somebody. Yeah, it, it was definitely a heavy thing for him. Uh, and I know a lot of people are scared of me, especially people in show business, because I don't horse shit around. Uh, you know, I, I really do. I'm not really enamored with people in show business. So, and I have a big audience, right, Eric? Yeah. Well, you're in one of the people who aren't big, but it is a big audience. You're a small part. Yeah. <laughs> you're a, a little person. Audience. Thank you. Oh, here's Jeff the drunk. I love when he pauses, Eric. I'm just thinking. Hey, Jeff. Yo. Mm. So are you going to do that carpenter thing that Bill Keller said? No. Why? Dude, I don't get you. Yeah, but in the name of all housing, don't do it. Yeah, but... What the fuck, Artie? Just whatever I do, shut up. Why what? are you upset with Artie all of a sudden? What the fuck? Did I not give you enough money last time, baby doll? Oh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, no, Howard, um, <laughs> just think about the carpentry shit. So great that, that you give him money and he's mad at you. Yeah, he's mad. He's pissed off at me. He's like an before. ungrateful child. Yeah, the last time he wanted me to send the money before he did the work I asked him to do, and when oh I was a minute God. late. Yeah, you didn't FedEx it to Where's him. Where's my money, motherfucker? <laughs> and you still sent it. Yeah, I sent it. Of course I did. <laughs> he better. Hey. So now why won't you be a carpenter? That was before my accident, okay? Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck am I gonna? I how the hell am I gonna hammer? I saw Think a woman with it. no arms feeding herself with her feet. Bill Keller said to him, right. he had a guest on a show, a woman with no arms who paints. Yeah. He yeah. says, you don't think because you have one arm, you can't do something in carpentry that you couldn't be like something, you know, like, like I was thinking he could I assist the carpentry. I can't hang a fucking bitch. You know, I got I to gotta tell you this. <laughs> I can't hang a bitch. Maybe I've he's worked, got a point. I've worked on uh, <laughs> construction sites. He would not be tolerated for two seconds. <laughs> really? <laughs> he could, he, could he paint? I mean, there's guys with two hands who don't do shit well, quick maybe enough. maybe he could build furniture. He could build cabinets. Well, that's <laughs> another thing. Yeah, but maybe... Could you think you could do custom carpentry where you go at your own pace? Do you have that kind of talent where you could be a cabinet maker or but something? Couldn't he assist the carpenter, like be the guy who hands him nails and shit? They wouldn't tolerate him. No. Mean, he'd no. be too slow. He'd no. be too slow. But but I don't know what your skill is. Do you have enough skill to do like what Robin said? That's a whole different uh, business. Couldn't he be a painter, like a painting of houses? Maybe. He's got one arm, or okay. A furniture finisher. Yeah, but then he's going to move the ladder and shit. Well, and there's all, to, all sorts of guys who, who want non union work and they have to accept maybe, you know, lesser Wait quality. a second. We had a kid in here. He had no arms or legs. And this kid played football in high school and did amazing things. 
Just because he's got one arm, he couldn't be oh, a painter Jeff of houses? Could, I don't know about painting. He could definitely do something. He's of course just... he could paint. But Jeff won't, you know, Jeff feels sorry for himself, so he makes himself an invalid. He could, without question, right. be at least a painter's helper or a pa or paint because the bucket will hang on the ladder and you dip it with your good arm and you paint. I've got to mention something. And, I... and as a carpenter, couldn't he use his bad arm as like a hammer? Yeah, like... but then you got to carry like <laughs> sheetrock and, and wood and stuff like that. I have a question yeah. for Jeff. But could he, he be have... the finisher? He could do the little, you know, the corner work. Oh, How are you finishing? Skills. Can you do crown molding? Did he ever have a real job before he got disabled? Probably not. No. No, he was a kid. So no, he wasn't such a kid. How so old were you when you? Skill... How old were you when your arm was screwed up? Eighteen. No. Forget yeah, about. I mean, we're talking no. about a skilled position. There's definitely work you can do. That's the point. You refuse to get any sort of work. We're arguing about whether or not you could be a carpenter. <laughs> you know, you, you could work, Jeff. He was a hand stamper. That's almost like painting. Right. That's a skill. <laughs> Maybe, well, like what Robin said, there's carpenters and there's cabinet makers who are more skilled. Maybe you could be a painter like Van Gogh or something. <laughs> or maybe you should go back to medical school and become a psychiatrist. Can you paint apples and pears? Tell me about your childhood. I just was curious if you were going to take Bill up on it. I think you should. Yeah. Give him a shot. He's making some phone calls for you. Jeff, how did you feel after that session? Nothing. Nothing? I didn't feel nothing. You got, were you depressed, or were you a little happier, or excited? No. Wow. No. All right, Jeff, thanks. I just wanted to know very, how you were doing. Very, very uneventful. People liked it, though. Hey, Howard. It's too bad somebody won't pay you just to, like... Hang around. Just to stand somewhere and drink. <laughs> he could be a telemarketer. Oh, oh please. On. He has some personality. <laughs> you know, you could be like, you know, like in, in the mob, they have, well, you know, like one IP. You could be one arm Jeff. And you could be like a, like a soldier. Well, it's a shame, like, someone won't pay him to be like a chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he is hard. Him. <laughs> Most chairs, though, you have to pay once and they work forever. Well, like, Jeff could be a like human coat rack in, like, Andy Warhol's house. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's modern art. He just stands there and, you know, hmm. people drape coats on him or whatever they think he should be. I'm a talking for. coat rack. <laughs> Uh, uh, don't put your coat on me. <laughs> you know what? Uh, remember in the old days they used to have somebody announce everybody who walked through the door? Jeff could be an announcer. Lord and Lady Douchebag. <laughs> yeah, and they had that on The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> remember when, like, you go to see The Wizard, two guys walk in and announce, they blow a trumpet right. and announce? Do you remember that Saturday yeah. Night Live sketch? Lion. Yeah. The one, uh... Lord and Lady Douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to the king the other day because I had Lord and Lady sandwich too. Yeah. I was talking to the king the other day and he said, "Give me a sandwich and a douchebag, and there's nothing I can't do." <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad they don't have anything like a job, like a human doorstop, where like, you hold the door. I think that's what he was that's at what the he supermarket. Had. Yeah, yeah, he had that job. That's what you were at the supermarket, right? You were a doorstop. Right. Right. No, I opened it was locked. Oh, you opened the door. I was more than a door fucking stop. Well, you opened the door, right? You held it open. Yeah. That's what a door stop does. Yeah. Well, you know, they have automated that whole technology of door opening. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, you've been... They replaced. ruined it for Jeff. Well, computers are replacing everybody, man. I mean, in your case, you, you were replaced by a cinder block, which is, you know, a little... <laughs> no, a little low tech. Working. Yes, you are. I was not. How did they replace you? They um, they computerized everything. Yeah, so you. Were... That's what I just said. You were replaced by. That cinder block. Well, I on. fucking heard you. Fucking around. All right, an automated cinder block. Right. <laughs> yeah. Computer tells the cinder block where to stand. Right. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you became a painter of houses, you'd be you'd have a skill. Yeah. Because the yeah. assistant to a painter, painters make good money. An assistant would do all right for himself, and, uh, you know, you wouldn't have to do much. You know, they got these faux finish techniques now. I bet you Jeff could do those. Oh, absolutely. No, he couldn't. <laughs> all you got to do is you get, a, you get a screw gun, and everything's prefab, man. I you just line it up. A, I can't climb a ladder. You can't I climb can't a ladder. Climb a ladder. Yes, you could. You do the lower half. No, I couldn't. So you'll be a lower half guy. Could he be a security guard? No. Who's gonna? Why can't he do that? Most of those guys sit at a door and they just check your ID. You know what? If he's a security guard, Fred, I want the address because I'm giving it to a couple of buddies of mine. <laughs> Come right in. 
Come right in the beers upstairs. Hey, you with the gun. Come in. <laughs> what did you just do, Jeff? <laughs> Is he available what for like... that noise? Jeff, are you all right? Yeah. Sometimes Jeff makes a noise like he'll go like, he'll say something real casual, and he'll say, he'll make this noise at the end. He'll go like, uh, Artie, I just want to tell you to fuck off, okay? Artie, where's the subway? <laughs> 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 yeah, what are those noises, Jeff? <laughs> Arnie, how do you get to the bathroom? <laughs> 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 hey, Jeff, are you going to throw up a lung in front of me? <laughs> he goes, <"Hurr." laughs> Yeah, he just made one of them, like it was a balloon getting deflated. Jeff, like what was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. What goes on? Nothing. Ernie, <laughs> which way to the exit door? <laughs> hey, you know that song? That song that you play, Vagina. The what? Vagina? Yeah, that song, Vagina. Yeah. I was thinking of it. It's just Vagina. <laughs> Sanjaya. Oh. oh, so now we're going to parody yeah. a parody. Yeah. 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 See, so you, you can be a writer on the show. <laughs> hey, I, you know, I think I, someone needs to replace Sal. Jeff could get a job as a scarecrow, I was thinking. <laughs> like, oh, out in a, 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 a crows. A talking scarecrow. Uh -huh. I mean, well, yeah, like a crow could land and go away. <laughs> Would you yeah. do that, Jeff? Would you, like, stand in a field and scare away birds? Why? Why not? Why? See, they, Jeff has the disease that every, every whackbacker has is they think they can be a writer on the show. It's all right. beneath them. Right, exactly. They want to be a producer. Right. You know what I noticed on Jeff's album? Somebody pointed it out to me today. There is a virgin that's uh, kid-friendly. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, what? so you can get the edited version. Well, nobody copies that song. <laughs> uh, you're kidding me. I'm not kidding. Oh. Kids version. Somebody had a real unexpected sort of awakening when they hired Jeff, and, mm -hmm. and, and they said, well, we'll make a, two versions. <laughs> and then he realized he was stuck with both versions. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the awakening? Like, oh, how much money did I put into this? <laughs> Jeff, what a great idea. A kid version of It's the Whiskey Talking. <laughs> We tried. Yeah, well, I, honestly, I think you should take Bill up on it. I think you need a career. Honestly, I do. Yeah, go find something you can do. I think you're a talented guy. In, in, in some respects, I think you could actually make it. What do you think? Well, uh, Jeff, right. I'm going to be serious. I think that you would be, if you did get a job on some sort of construction site, like an assistant or something, people would like you. you you'd be fun to hang around. Uh, people love busting balls on those jobs, and you'd be the, the head guy to bust chops with, you know? All right, you Jeff. have a crew of friends. i got to move along, but thanks. And, and take Bill up on it. I really think you should, because you're going to get depressed otherwise, all right? Yeah. All right. Later. Jessica Hahn, hi. Hi, baby. Hey, you know, he should do voice work. He's funny. Yeah. Um, Howard, uh, listen, you guys are overanalyzing. Beth was perfect. She was smooth. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want these old, I, got, I hate to say it, but you don't want old people as your audience you know what i mean no 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 i'm not over analyzing at all i thought she was terrific and, 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 uh, awesome. and, I, and I she mean, got such incredible feedback right. from uh, not only our horrible. fans but yeah. from uh, everyone who uh it, it, i mean i can't even begin to tell you how many people enjoy well, i read adam buckman's uh, it's not really a total review but the one paragraph where he does sort of go over her performance he obviously loved it yeah no 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 i think adam was really nice yeah tall blonde outgoing and self-effacing ostrowski uh exhibited no, the kind of charming bubbly personality once described as vivacious well you know what it is what what, what beth was saying is i think the reason that she got so sort of you know like, nervous or uptight. Yeah, uptight. She says, my God, when I think about how oh, analyzed I am because I'm your girlfriend, yeah. you know, I, I really, I don't want to let your fans down. I don't, you know, it's just like, wow. How, you you know. know, that's her charm, though, is she's so opposite of you. That's what, it's so perfect. You know yeah. what I mean? She's she's a great, you know, partner. And I know. Would you ever expect me to really fall in love with a girl like that? I mean, no. obviously, okay, yeah, beauty, okay. But I'm saying she is kind of like a good person. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? 
I don't know. You probably expect me to be with some. No, everybody thinks you'd be with a stripper or mm. you know some loud mouthed uh, you know I want to manage the band girl. Right, 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 right. <laughs> a tough girl, but you know she's she's just smooth. Howard she represented. She spoke about serious, but she didn't overdo it. She, no. She spoke about Iraq. I mean, it was real from the heart. Yeah, she didn't want to come in and overwhelm people with right, her personality. Been... You know. She wasn't hyper. She was nice, you know, relaxed. She came off real relaxed and looks beautiful. But, you know, she was perfect. She didn't overdo it. She didn't underdo it either. Yeah, I, I happen to rosy. agree. I agree with you, yeah. Jessica. All right. Thanks, baby. Right. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Well, right. Enough of you, that topic. No, but when you come into this world, everything is amplified. Like, I used to do, you know, talk show appearances on Conan before here. And uh, after after you're here, those appearances are way different. <laughs> way more important. <laughs> well, yeah, they are. It's it's just everything is so amplified, the pressure and everything. Yeah. I think she did very well. Eric, uh, so uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. We'll find out uh, if uh, Sanjaya won. We'll talk about it tomorrow on the air. You better, because I voted. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, just real quick, the only skill I could think that just a drunk would be good for beer tasting. A beer taster. All right, Eric. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Listen to the playback, Eric. I think you're going to find that got a big laugh. You just didn't hear it. Yeah, there's, there's nobody here to laugh. <laughs> beer taster. <laughs>